Hey there. So today I'm going to go through and show you how you can make your own print covers if you want to save a couple dollars when you're publishing your book. Um, the process is pretty straightforward. You just honestly have to know what they're looking for, um, what you need to do, and how to get your resources. And I'll go through the process because it does save money, especially when you're publishing multiple books on your platform. Um, I personally do use Photoshop, which is a paid program, rather than something free like Canva. Um, I do believe this can be redone in something cheaper. Um, Canva's a good option. It's a little bit limited, especially if you don't pay for Pro. Um, another option would be GIMP, which is a free program. It, it's just not as straightforward as Photoshop, so I'm going to show you the easiest way that I make these print covers as quickly as possible. What we're going to go through today is I'm going to show you how we make this cover, which is a mock-up of a fake book. It's just the uh, ebook cover that we would publish on an ebook. And by the end, I'm going to show you how to turn it into this, which is the full front, back, and spine, which is what Amazon requires when you are printing uh, your book for their market. Um, now, Amazon themselves in their back office for you will provide um, a page, and I'm going to show you that here. Um, that page is going to generate you your template, and that is the most important thing you're going to need for this. Now, obviously, you're going to need your, um, your front cover, of course, but this template is really what they look for when you're publishing your book to make sure that when they print the book, there's no bleed. Like, it's going to look really good as your paperback book. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and show you that website now. Okay, so this is the page. It is kdp.amazon.com slash en underscore us slash cover templates. That's it. Um, it. As you can see, it's in our back office. Um, you're going to select the trim. We always do six by nine. And this book it alone would be 125 pages let's say and you just go ahead and download your cover template it takes just a moment we're going to open that up open it up here to show you this is what your template looks like so to explain this template just a little bit this is your workable back cover around this barcode here you're going to want this will be your description, any information you want on the back of a physical book. Um, you're going to want to grab your readers. Um, I've done other videos on creating a catching cover, um, like description. And if you haven't seen that video, that helps a lot because your, um, your back cover or your description on Amazon is really what's going to sell these books. And we're going to format that on Photoshop to make it look good. This is your spine, and that's gonna have your, your title and your author, and that's gonna be about it. And then this is where you put your art. So this orange that you see around here, these are things that you cannot have any bleed, like anything bleeding. So you don't want any artwork in there, you don't want any text, logo, anything essential, because this is gonna get cut, it's not gonna look good, um, if it's like, if you were doing a dust jacket, this would like bend weird. And when you're putting this information, you want to make sure it's only in this white area, the live area, because again, you don't want it to like stretch weird, anything like that. Now it's not, it's not just an aesthetic thing. Amazon will deny your cover. They'll say, Hey, you have these issues. Um, another thing, which it actually does not tell you is any book under 100 pages does not get spine text. It's too small. They don't print it. So if your book is only 90 pages long or 60 pages long, you're really just going to go ahead and skip this area totally. Um, the reason I put 125 pages, because obviously this isn't a real book, but I did want to show you how to place your spine text for this, because um, making the assumption that you're making a book over 100 pages but if you're not, which is perfectly fine, don't worry about it. 
just skip this part and make sure you have your description and your art. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I do this process. Um, again, like I said, it's super easy. Don't feel intimidated. Use whatever image software you have. Um, it is easier if you have an image software that will allow you, like I do, to overlay this uh, template on top of your art so that you can always just adjust and make sure that things are in the right spot. Okay. So this is what my Photoshop page looks like. As you can see, I've got both images up. On the right, I have our original image for the cover. I'm going to flatten it down to a single image so that when I click and drag it, there's no layers or anything. I'm resizing it here to make it fit the screen. I'm using free transform and making it a little bigger, making sure it fits within the red lines. Now I'm going to make an extended background so that everything is nice and seamless. Um, one thing that I personally prefer is when the art extends simply across the whole thing. So on the top, I do have a little bit of a green line, so I'm extending that out, doing a matching green color, and then so the next thing I'm doing is I'm actually going to overlay that. So I make sure that the background layer can go on top. I set the opacity to about halfway so that I can see where my lines are. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the description now. Um, I've already chosen my fonts when I did the, the cover. So what I used was Open Sans. It's a very simple font that still looks very nice when big or small. Um, I'm opening up the character window. I'm going to window character and that will help me set the alignment for my text so that it looks nice and uniform and it's not just jumbled up. So next we're actually going to go ahead and take our description which I've already done and we're going to copy it and bring it into Photoshop. Um, like I said, I'm going to link the video on description so that you can do this super easy. Unfortunately, since it's already, since Photoshop doesn't bring the text styling over, I'm actually going to have to reformat it, but it only takes a couple minutes. Um, you're going to want to put any bullet points that you already had. You're going to want any um, line spaces, any larger text. The way that I personally do it is visually entirely so I'm adding my bullet points now and um, as you watch you're going to see this turn into sort of a formatted description. Um, I'm going to move it along a little bit quicker but um, essentially I just bold things I want people to read. I make things uh, larger. I put spaces where they're needed. Um, essentially I'm creating visual um, visual cues of where I want people to look. You know, I want people to look and see, oh, there's so much more. I want people to be like grabbed by my book description. Um, because this is going to be on a shelf. It's going to be super easy to, to get lost in a crowd, um, of other books and stuff like that. So just, just watch, see what I do. If you, obviously, if you have any questions, um, the other video does a much better job of explaining this, um, and since it's already formatted, I kind of already know what it's supposed to look like, so...
so one thing I did want to note for you was I, I I'm not married to any of the words in my description so I will actually go ahead and cut words and phrases and move things around just to make sure that it fits because the biggest thing is I don't want it to be cut off by the uh by the barcode so when I'm doing things I'm just keeping that in mind I'm constantly turning it on and off to make sure that I know that I'm inside those guidelines um, what I ended on at the end was less words than I originally had less words than would be on the Amazon description, but it, it works out because it looks nice. And in the end, I know that this description will fit my template and that's, what's important because you want the end result to look good. That's my main concern. Now, what I went ahead and did was I actually pulled more of the green into um, into things so that it still looked sort of like it had a theme. I wanted that green to just sort of pop out. Again, I'm creating visual markers for people to draw their eyes to. Same with the bold, same with um, the text that I've turned green. Um, it's all the same, you know. It, it brings a little bit of color to what would otherwise just be black and white. and that's how I like it looking. Um, do that a little bit more here. As you can see, I kind of go back and forth on what I would like to be, you know, black and green. Um, and on the front, it, it is both black and green so that this is all still sort of themed correctly. Um, and after I've done my description, which I'm finishing up here, the next thing I need to do is my um, title and author, which are going on the spine. So as you can see here, I make the text a little bigger, make sure obviously it's spelled correctly. The font needs to be the same font as I'm using for the rest of the thing. And then I'm going to edit, transform, and I'm flipping it 90 degrees clockwise so that it is red on the side so that when your book is on a bookshelf, you can still see your, your cover, um, your title, and your author um, text is too big so I'm actually going to move it a little bit shrink it down it takes a little bit of finagling to make sure that it's the correct size and I believe I do turn it green here as well just because it's a nice green and what I do next is instead of having to do the whole thing I just duplicate the same layer because I know that that size and the all of that fits within so I go up here. I use smart um, smart guides to make sure that things align correctly. And that's those red lines you'll see whenever I move things around. And that makes sure things align properly. All right. And I brought back in that same black and green from the cover. I'm going to move this one a little bit. Make sure it's just right. All right. So now I have my cover like all this setup this is what the book cover would look like as you can double check and there we go and from there that's about it um at that point i would convert the book to a pdf um in photoshop it would just be file save and then you would just click uh, pdf um that part is pretty self-explanatory and going forward, you would put that PDF into KDP's back office when you go to upload your book. Um, it goes through a little bit of an approval process. It's sort of like a pre-approval. And that pre-approval will essentially tell you, are you within the lines? Which, if you use the template, you absolutely will be. Um, like it says on the template, make sure you make it, you get rid of the guidelines before you save it. Because um, you don't want that on your art. Um, make sure everything is spelled correctly, of course, because Photoshop doesn't have a spell checker. You're going to want to check it before you put it over. Um, anything else I say would be pretty much obvious. Um, and if you have any more questions, please go ahead, go down to the comments below. I will keep an eye on this and make sure that I can help you through the process. In the future, if you guys want, I can try and figure out how to do it on another program, something for free. 
uh, make it a little bit easier. It'll be more or less the same tutorial with the same stuff. It'll just be how to do it in GIMP or Canva or something like that. Um, and if that's something you guys want to see, go ahead. I know I personally um, cannot stress enough how much this design work is super easy, simple, straightforward. I mean, I know this doesn't really go through the process of making your book cover. Um, but at this point, you should already have your book cover, whether you hired somebody to do it elsewhere or you made it yourself with um, stock images or other sort of photography. And um, like I use Photoshop for this because it makes my job a lot easier. But if you have something you prefer to use, it's 100% just as good. So um, that's going to be it for this video. I know it was um, a little bit long winded, but hopefully this explains the process. And, you know, if you have a larger volume of books, this can really add up and save you a good amount of money. So it is a useful tool to have in your repertoire. And I think that going forward, it should help a lot of you. So good luck.